10 years. That's how long it can take on average for a first time buyer in the UK to save up for a house deposit. That's why we've created this guide on 10 tips on being a first time buyer. So let's get into it. Tip number one, be an early bird. The sooner you start checking on your credit file and what's going on in your financial background, the better. Don't wait until you've saved up your deposit to then start checking your credit file. Because if you come to your mortgage application and something comes up on your credit file and it might just be something minor, it could delay everything and it could cause a crash. The best thing for you to do is check your credit file and if there is something that's amiss on your credit report, if you check it sooner, the sooner you can get it removed or the sooner you can get it fixed. Don't leave it till it's last minute. Tip number two, clear the game. Stop thinking you need a 10, 15, 20% deposit to purchase your first home. We're finding a lot of deposits are about 5%, and that's fine. There's some lenders are doing 100% mortgages, which means 0% deposit. 5% will get you across the line. If you can save up 5%, and I appreciate in more affluent areas, London, Manchester type of city places, 5% is a lot of deposit to save. So 10 to 15 can just be a little bit too high. So 5% work on that and we can build on that. Tip number three, get a green light master. All we mean is make sure you look at getting a decision in principle. And that's where mortgage advisors are gonna come in and be worth their weight in gold. Because if you go straight to the bank and they say no, it can be disheartening. The first time I bought a house, I went straight to my bank, had no other reason or such to how to do it. Straight away, they said no. If I'd have gone to a mortgage advisor, they have access to a hundred banks where one says no, one might say yes. So make sure you sit down with a mortgage advisor and make sure you disclose as much as you possibly can so they can be that green light master and get you a decision in principle ready so you can start looking at houses, you can start planning your future and you're going to see how much it's going to cost and how much you can borrow. Again, a decision in principle is just the certificate to say how much a bank is willing to lend you upon application all right it's a pre-approved mortgage you could call it tip number four set a budget and set a stylish one just because a bank is willing to lend you 100 200 000 pound doesn't mean you want to pay the mortgage on a 100 200 000 pound house just because you can afford it and your affordability is there doesn't mean you want to stretch yourself on a monthly basis there's two types of budgets i always say the first budget is how much is a bank willing to lend you the second is how much are you willing to pay per month so make sure you set a budget but you set a stylish budget make sure the house you're going for is going to be exactly what you want all right it's all well and good getting on the property ladder that's fine but if you don't step on that property ladder on the right property and you just do it for the sake of doing it, trust me, two months, three months, four down, four months down the line, that sexy shine's gonna disappear and you're gonna be sick of that monthly payment. Tip number five, list your desires. Decide where you wanna be, write a goal and make sure that location is spot on. How many bedrooms is it is? What's the location like? Is there nearby schools? What's it like getting out from and into the estate? Is the traffic bad? Are you near main roads to get to work? Whereabouts are you going to be? Again, don't settle. Make sure that the spaces you want, or at least the floor plan, is ready for you moving in. Because at the end of the day, just because you're getting on the property ladder, like we said in tip four, doesn't always mean you want to be in that property. So make sure you get you write your target down, you write your goals down, and that's the way you go forward. Do not just go for the cheapest property nearby. Make sure that that property ticks all your boxes. Tip number six, hire a 007 agent. Find yourself an estate agent which is going to help you through the full process. Who's going to break it down for you, make it as simplistic as possible and put you in touch with the right people, the right mortgage broker, the right solicitors and so on and so forth. You want someone that's going to be on your side, not just there for the sale. Tip number seven, attend the property gala. Go and look at properties. You're not gonna make this happen just by looking on rightmove.com. It's not going to happen. It's a good place to start, but you need to get your walking boots on and you need to book in viewings. You need to go see these properties to see what they are, see what they're like. Get a feel for the house, because the more and more you encompass and really get into the house buying process, the more chances you are you're gonna come across your dream property. But number two, you might come across a property that just isn't there yet, but going there and touching it, feeling it, and having a good look around, your imagination's gonna set on fire and you'll know what to do. So stop looking on your phone, stop scrolling coming down at properties that, you know, two million, three million pounds. Hey, you might be able to afford that, but get out there, start looking, start feeling, start touching. Book meetings and book viewings. Tip number eight, 
don't miss out on snooping opportunities. So when you look at a property and you've set your heart and you set your desires on one property, make sure and please, please, please make sure to get it checked by the right people. Yes, you'll get a mortgage valuation report from the lender, but that's not gonna always tell you the ins and outs of everything. Make sure to get the correct searches done and get a severe report. Two things can happen here. Number one, if there's anything amiss or there's anything missing or something that needs doing, there's electrical work that's at fault, there's water leaks, whatever it might be, it's gonna give you the opportunity to bring them up before you purchase the property. And number two, if you do find something in the searches, it's gonna put you in a good position for negotiations, bringing the price of that house down. Tip number nine, become a cost buster. It's not just about the mortgage payment, it's all the other things that come included. So work it out, get yourself a spreadsheet, get yourself a notebook, however you wanna record your outgoings, begin to research on the cost it's gonna cost you. Because it's not just about that mortgage payment, it's about the council tax, the utility bills, which is gas, electric and water, food bills, car payments, car insurance, your Netflix subscription, believe it or not, and all your streaming services, all the things that are gonna crop up as well with a home. There's the boiler need inspecting every year, your home insurance, your life insurance. There's so much to consider. It's not just about that mortgage payment, it's everything else that surrounds it. So make sure you don't just go in thinking it's gonna be 600 pound a month because that's how much the mortgage is. Think about all the surrounding factors as well. Tip number 10, become a chief negotiator. Now, negotiating can be scary because asking for what you want has always got that pressure of the answer of coming no. But if you don't ask, you're told the answer is always going to be no. Make sure that you negotiate the price of the house. Even if you think it's a good buy, there's still nothing stopping you. I put in a bid in a little bit under the asking price. If they say no, that's fine. That's not a problem at all. But if they say yes, well, your quid's in. And also what you will find as well, again, why it's so important to get a good mortgage advisor, they might negotiate for you on your behalf. So if you don't feel comfortable asking the question, someone else can ask it for you. That's it. That's my 10 tips on being a first time buyer in the UK in 2024. At the end of the day, guys, it's not just about the final destination. It's the journey on getting there as well. Have fun with it. Make sure you do all your checklists. Make sure you get your guide ready. And I promise you, your first time buying experience will become an enjoyable one. Don't get me wrong. There'll be stresses along the way, but Keep in tune, make sure to like, subscribe, put that little notification on so you can see all our new videos coming up. And if you've got any questions, anything that you need to ask, please put it in the comment section below and I'll make sure to answer it. Peace.